Okay, for our next tutorial, we're going to query a Salesforce record and use pieces of it for the email that we're sending. So here is our uh, previous uh, flow. Now what I'm going to do, because I'm going to start to make changes to it, uh, I'm going to uh, duplicate it so that we can create a, a Lesson 1B flow. Now to do, I'm going to just click Save As. I get two choices here. You, you always, when you're saving, can decide, hey, am I going to just change the, create a new version of the current flow or use this to kind of clone off a, a completely different flow? And if I wanted to make changes to Lesson 1A, then I would select New Version. Uh, that allows me to start making the changes, but lets the old version keep running, which is good because there may be flows that are in the middle of operation and we don't want my changes to break them. So when you make changes to an existing flow, you you give it a new, you, you kind of build up this set of versions of different changes as, as you go, different versions of the flow. But in our case, we're going to, we're going to, completely break free and do lesson 1b uh, get a record and use it and this is also going to be an auto launched flow okay so we're gonna expand on our original flow by retrieving a record from Salesforce and using that information in the email we're going to send. And this is the record right here, Susan Ferris. I actually have set her email address to the same place, so we'll be able to check uh, and see the incoming email coming in. So we're going to use Get Records and give it a name. And the next thing we do is we say, which Salesforce object do we want? So I can type uh, and it'll do, a, do a, a partial search. So I selected my object. The next thing is specifying which contacts to use. You can actually start with getting all contact records, but you rarely want to do that. Usually um, what we want to do here is be very specific. So in this case, let's um, let's basically just go with first name Susan and last name Ferris so that we'll retrieve just this one contact for our flow. So I'm going to, you can see here I've got the different fields from the contact are, are pre-populated and I can set up my filter for my query and I'm once again using standard just hard-coded strings here rather than um, one of the resources. Sort order, I don't care about that. Uh, the next question, how many records to store, isn't really important to us because we know there's only going to be one record. So we're going to leave only the first record selected. Where to store field values. Now, the rest of this configuration is about where to temporarily park the record so that it can be used later in the flow. And to, to, to park data so you can use it downstream as I like to refer to it, you create a variable. A variable is just another, just a fancy techie way of saying a place to temporarily park stuff. So we're going to create a record variable uh, and we are going to, uh, basically that's going to be a contact. So we're going to pull the contact data, data down from Salesforce and we're going to temporarily store it in a contact record variable so that we can pass pieces of it to the email. Now to create this temporary storage we're going to have to make a resource and now let's go do that. So I click new resource and here are my choices and what I want is right here it's variable uh, 
there's a lot of other things here that we'll talk about in later later tutorials uh, and I give it a name so I'm gonna call this cur contact uh, cur short for current to help help me realize that this is the current contact that I have loaded in and then here I need to specify what type it is now I'm gonna select record here in previous versions this was called s object and now we're referring to it as a record so basically I need to specify that because you can create variables of different different kinds you can create a simple temporary storage for a piece of text or a temporary storage for a date uh, but we want something a little more complex than that we want a contact so once again I'm going to say I want a contact uh, and I don't need to worry about multiple values so I'm not going to check this box uh, availability outside the flow this essentially allows you to opt in to letting data that you retrieve be used outside of the flow in our case we don't actually plan to uh, use this data directly outside of the flow except for the email we're sending so I'm gonna leave those alone okay and now when I click on this again you can see the cur contact the record variable that I have just defined is now available to be to be chosen so you don't have you only have to go through all of that the first time you define uh, a variable subsequently they'll just be something you can pick from the list and the final piece of of uh, getting a record for use in a flow is that you need to tell Salesforce which fields you want uh, the, since the since the object since the record could be very large uh, Salesforce doesn't want to automatically get them all uh, so in this case I'm going to specify what I care about so in this case I don't really you know I, I, I need the fir you know the first name and, and the last name may become may become useful but this is where I really have to think about what I'm going to want to do with this record in my email. Well, one thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to use its email address. So let's make sure we grab that. And then just for fun, I'm going to grab a few other fields to use in the body of the email. So I'm going to grab vote for winter 20 icon. And I'm going to vote uh, for. Uh, on call availability and this little icon shows you the type of that field so these are simple text fields and the final one I'm going to grab is most expert product and so now we are done preparing our record query and we have it here and we can if we go and look at these fields you can see that the ones I grabbed are right down here most expert product vote for winter 20 icon and on call available so I'm expecting to pull that data in and store it temporarily for use later in the flow now you see that although I've created it it, it isn't hooked up so I'm gonna have to hook that up myself okay so I'm gonna delete that I can simply click on it and and click my delete button and then put this in line alright so now I have retrieved my record uh, but uh, I haven't done anything to my send an email so if we pop in there you can see that it's still hard coded with this is the subject line and this is the body of the email and a hard-coded address so let's get rid of these hard-coded values now what I want to replace this with I want to replace it with the email address from the contact where am I going to find that well I'm going to find it in that temporary storage variable I created called cur contact so if I go here and you can see that my list of records is getting larger because I'm defining more things and here is the record variable cur contact I click on this and it lets me drill down and select the field now one of the things to be careful about is even though it's got all the fields listed here flow is only going to actually have data to work with if you specified it 
early uh, in the record query. So just to show you that, so let's save that. If I go back here once again, down here at the bottom, I had to I have to specify which fields I actually want to bring along for the rest of the flow. So I don't have, for example, I didn't add birthday could have added birthday, could have gone here and selected birthday, but I didn't add it. And as a result, here, I'm, even though I can pick it from the list, uh, it wouldn't work. So that's something we're going to have to have to do better with in the future. Um, okay, so let's, let's change the body. The subject line, well, let's change the subject to here's the data we have on you have on you now what I want to do in the body is I want to mix some text with these three values that, that we that we pull down from the record most expert product vote for winter 20 icon and on call available this is a classic mail merge I sort of need to create a template with some text that is hard-coded and then I want to merge in the values for whatever contact that I pull. Now I've set up this flow to automatically pull Susan Ferris, but we want to design this so that I can change that to another name and it will still work. So we need to, every time we run this, we want to pull the proper values for the different persons. So for example, if we change that to Lauren Boyle, we're going to want to grab her values, which are a little different. All right, so the way that you create a mail merge in Flow is with a resource called a text template. So we're going to go over here to Manager, and I'm going to click on New Resource. So it's a very useful tool here. It shows, it shows all the resources you've created, lets you edit them and delete them, uh, and let you create a new one. So here, I'm going to go down here, I'm going to select text template. And let's call this the email body. And this is the text template used for merging and contact data. Okay, so, so now I want to sort of write the body of my mail. Um, here's what we know about you. You voted in the following way for the Winter 20 Salesforce Edition icon. And now to insert the merge, I'm basically going to go and pick it uh, from pick it in kind of exactly the same way. So I go to here to Kerr Contact and I select that value just like this. Now I could have typed that in. This is this is this is plain old text. Uh, and let's see, you 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 are most expert in the following Salesforce product. And let's basically that's called the field is called most expert product. You got to be careful here because the fact that you can type stuff means you can break stuff too. And then finally, your current on call status is, and then let's get on call available. All right, so now we've got our text template there. Uh, and now that it's a resource, we can use it. Text templates are strings. So we can go here to this subject. And you can see that the text template that we defined is now available for choosing. So I'm going to simply insert that. And once again, you could just go You could just go type it in. All right, so I think we're done here. Let's run our flow.
save it close finished well you can say <laughs> We can see the, the mistake I made. The good news is the flow did exactly what I told it to do. The bad news is that I, I wonder how many of you who are watching this were already like noticing that and going, man, he's gonna, he is in for a surprise. But that's easily fixed, easily enough fixed. So let's grab this. You can see that I could just paste that in here into the body, and we can say, here's what we know about you and save that save it again you run finished all right and let's go and and there's a little more like it and so you can see how you can pull data out of salesforce and use it for things in this case we used it for sending an email Here are some additional resources where you can learn a lot about Flow, the other tutorials, some of our official data, and the link to the unofficial Flow community site.